Hello and welcome back to the final part of this four-part series looking at uh, Luke 10, the sending out of the 72. In the first four verses, we heard of Jesus sending out common folk like you and I, 72 unnamed disciples that he sent out to places where he was about to go. He reminded them to take nothing with them, uh, to take no sandals or a bag, uh, and certainly not stop and talk to anybody along the way. This is a reminder that we are uh, to trust the Lord, to be completely uh, in his hands as we step out into the mission that he calls us into. We are also not to get sidetracked along the way, but to continue and focus on the mission before us. This also reminds us that we are not to take any of our own baggage with us, but to leave all of that behind and to go out there trusting that we can be and hoping and praying that we can be the best translation possible of maybe the only Bible that people will read. And that Bible is the witness that you and I bring into that situation. In the second week, we looked at speaking peace or shalom onto a house. And that if that peace rests on that house, we are to stay there, not to move about from house to house. And that talks about commitment. That talks about staying with those that God sends us to. And it also, in some way, speaks to us of church. And that is that if something is said or we hear that upsets us, isn't to our liking, might even offend us. That don't go bouncing off to the next spiritual high you can get uh, somewhere else. But stay there. There are opportunities for us to learn in every situation. All scripture is good for rebuking and for teaching and encouraging and building up. So don't bounce from church to church if that's how you feel. Stay and learn. And then just last week, we talked about healing and we talked about how we can minister to people, how maybe we misunderstand what the true definition of healing could be, that it could be spiritual wellness as well as physical wellness. We also spoke about uh, if we get rejected to move on. And you might remember we looked at the disciples that found the teaching just too hard and left, left Jesus' ministry. But Jesus did not go running after them, but uh, stayed with those uh, who were focused on mission and trusting him. As Peter said, where else would we go? You hold the words of life. And so here we are in week four, and Jesus is continuing on from where he says about how we're to walk away if we get rejected. And what he says is this. That whoever rejects you is actually rejecting me. Because you carry me in you. It is my words by the inspiration of my spirit that you speak. And so if they're rejecting you, then they're rejecting me. So don't worry about it. Because if they reject me, they also reject the one who sent me. Not everybody is going to be open and willing to hear the message that we might bring. But don't be disheartened by this because you may be only one link in the chain. You're not to know that you're the third person that day or the tenth person that week who has spoken to that person about Jesus. You don't know that you're not the first person to begin a chain of people speaking to them and encouraging them to discover Jesus for themselves. So don't be disheartened if they reject you, because it's not you personally that is being rejected. Then the scripture appears to do a huge jump, because the next thing it says is, when the 72 returned. I wouldn't have imagined that it would be later that afternoon. I would imagine that that would be quite a significant time afterwards. I have held for a long time that we don't just read what's in Scripture. We read what the original intention of the author may be, but also understanding that these are real people that are being reported here. 
And so when it says that the 72 came back rejoicing, saying that even the demons fled at your name, I can imagine that it would be like uh, uh, back in the day when I was uh, doing extreme tourism in Mosgiel. And uh, I used to do the video work for a rafting trip called the Tyree Challenge. And when we finished that rafting trip, the kids that were on it would hoop and holler and whoop and slap hands and high fives and all that sort of thing because they had just achieved things that they never thought were possible before they went on the rafting trip. I can imagine the 72 coming back and hooping and hollering and high-fiving just like those kids did uh, and saying that even the demons submit to us in your name. And that's the crux, in your name. We have no power to do anything on our own. I have been uh, the witness to and have had the privilege of being uh, there when people have been healed. I have had uh, the privilege of seeing people's lives turned around 180 degrees. I have had the privilege of being with people when they've discovered the reality of Christ for themselves. But it's nothing that Russell does. It's nothing that you do. But by the Spirit of God that these things are done. And so Jesus says, well, that's very cool that these things are happening. I mean, oh, I saw Satan fall from heaven, remember? So don't get caught up in the, the trappings of this. Don't get caught up in the physicality. Don't get caught up in what you see happening, the manifestations of what was going on around you. Don't get trapped by that. But be excited because your name is written in my book of life. That's what's important. Scripture talks about don't worry about who can hurt the physical. Be more concerned of who can hurt the spiritual. And then Jesus finishes with this. There's been prophets down the centuries who have wanted to see and witness and be involved in what you have just witnessed and seen and be involved. So yours is a blessing that this has happened for you and by you as the Spirit works through you. So be excited by that. And that's the challenge I think that's before us. The challenge is to recall that we are just ordinary folks, but that Jesus wants to work in our lives and bring his mission into the community where he's placed you. Don't bounce around from community to community. Because he has placed you in a special time, in a special place for a special purpose. But make sure that you put yourself aside and allow him to work through you. He says that things will happen, but in my name. That you may be rejected, but you're rejected because of me. And so don't worry about those people. But just rejoice that your name is written in my book. If you don't know Jesus, I encourage you to ask him to come into your life to reveal himself to you. Just say, Jesus, if you're real, show me. There are other videos on the site that will help you discover Jesus for yourself. I encourage you to watch them. We need to constantly remember that it is his mission and his mission field. But we have the privilege of working with him, of being his ambassadors, of being his representatives. Read scripture. Pray regularly. Spend time in his presence. Become more like him. And you will truly witness the risen Lord in your community and in your lives. I trust this series has brought some understanding and some inspiration for you to step up and step out. Jesus is with you in everything that you do in his name. And so may the blessing of God be on you and your household. May his favor rest on you. And may shalom be in your life this day and forever. Amen.